Okay, we are going to get started uh, almost on time. Hopefully everybody is able to access the internet and has at least tried to sign into your VM, but if you haven't yet, um, no worries, we will go through that. If you haven't figured it out yet, hi, I'm Sherry. I've been the one sending you bunches of emails and verbose introductions on Slack. Um, I won't go through that whole introduction again, but if you missed it, uh, I came from somewhere background with you guys. I was a biologist never formally taught R and had to basically go through and figure it out myself. And as I was going through, I was writing out these notes and I eventually turned it into a course more or less for myself and then began sharing with other people. And through numerous years and iterations, it's become this course. So this is meant to be a introduction to the useful things that you would need to know to get started in R, to get moving through a lot of the biological packages and a lot of the things that you may encounter later on. We're going to focus largely on the language of R so that you can relearn it easier every time. We're biologists, we're not statisticians, we're not using this all the time. I routinely go months without using R, and sometimes I have to go back and review certain things, which is why this resource is really helpful for me because I can go back through and look at, okay, what are the data types, what do I need to do to load a library, what's this specific syntax. But knowing some of the vocabulary really helps find that information, and also helps it lodge into your brain a little easier than being just a disparate language of its own. So I think of uh, R as an actual, kind of similar to an actual language. And one of the things that I'm going to refer to a lot is another computational language, specifically in the book, it's labeled as Bash or Unix, which is a command line that you might traditionally use on a cluster. Uh, the reason I mention this is because if you have any experience with that, which is the other most common place for people to start, it's easier to learn R if you have another language. Just like learning another language helps you learn English better. After 30 plus years of speaking English, I just learned a grammatical structure called the gerund because I'm learning Spanish. Um, there's always new things to learn and it's always very much so transferable. So I'll be mentioning Unix throughout. However, if you don't know Unix, don't worry about it. Uh, just think of it as a demonstration of differences between languages. So today uh, we're going to start by going through some of the basics. Um, like how to get to this environment, which is the number one question I've been getting thus far. Um, booting uh, around that environment, declaring variables, using some commands, um, loading data, one of the most important topics, getting help, and how to install new stuff once you decide you need to do more complicated things with R. And as a note, um, I do routinely have to learn new languages. Like I said, I routinely have to go review R. I'm also learning Perl through other projects. And if you're reading through the textbook, you'll also realize that I'm still learning LaTeX, which is a miniature language for formatting PDFs. And there are errors in this book. Uh, this is the first time we've been using this. I just wrote the, uh, this since the first of the year. So if you see things like on page whatever seven is this, uh, where it says numbered list, that's clearly not supposed to be there. I am now aware of that. I will fix the grammatical errors uh, that I have found, and you guys will get a new version of this at the end of the course, which will include not only input from you guys and things that we learned from talking to you since this is such a big group, but as well as fixing the errors that I am now noticing in the textbook. Okay. Uh, any questions thus far? Okay. So the first thing we got to do is get you guys started on. R. One of the things that I tried to get uh, people to at least attempt while we were um, waiting over the weekend is getting access to this environment. This is one of several ways you can access R. R is available as a downloadable package that you can use directly on your machine. Um, there's a lot of uh, information on how to install that. And I do use a lot of my, um, my R on my machine locally, especially to figure things out, figure out what I need to do, and then expand it larger. I do build on top of this R Studio. R Studio is highly, highly, highly recommended. It looks like what you see on the screen. It has wonderful things like the ability to see files, you can see your environment, you can see plots when you make them without having to download them every time. It's very, very useful. What you're actually going to use at this time is a slightly different version called R Studio Server. And this is a cloud image. So this is a virtual machine that we can start for you that has all identical hardware, all identical installations. So it makes troubleshooting for you guys a lot easier. And we can also sign into it. 
And we put it up on the Exceed cloud that I have uh, hosts called Jetstream and gave you guys all access. Now to get access to that, I gave you an email with your number and this lovely list. So if you guys are having trouble, this is, this is your little tutorial on how to get in. So if I, I'm gonna pick one of the last numbers. Um, if I were say number 114, my username is gonna be guest user three and the same password as everybody else, learning R with a capital R. Write that down and then just click this and it will ask you to sign in and you can just do guest user three and then learning R. And this will get you uh, access to this uh, via. Uh, I was momentarily muted. Uh, I don't know if someone's using this, and if they are, uh, I will boot them out. This is an important point. Use your number. If you are having problems with your number, let us know, and we will give you a new one. But don't just willy-nilly change, because you will boot out anybody who's actively using that number. So please, please, please stick to your own. Remember it. Um, if you have trouble or can't, let us know. Uh, we do keep track of all of these for our sanity, as well as yours. Um, but make sure you are using the correct one. I'm going to give us a minute to make sure everybody is able to sign in and get everybody on, on one uh, page and check it to make sure everybody is available before I talk about where to get the textbook and the data. Okay. Who here has not been able to sign in? Anyone? Are you guys having problems? I have a long end of the emails. I don't know why, but when I forward it to my Gmail, it's a missing one. So, um, hey, Sherry. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Yeah. Is anybody sure. else? If anybody is not getting the emails, please email me. My email is uh, I'll put it up here so you guys can actually see it. Super easy. Uh, and we will make sure to add you to all future emails and get you uh, to speed. Okay. Bloomington or online folks, do you have any need to wait? Looks like we're good. Okay. So now that you're on here, uh, where do you get files and instructions? The easiest way is to get it from our website. I will show you from our home. Our website is ncgas.org. We're at the National Center for Genome Analysis Support, NCGAS. And if you go to workshops and then R for biologists, this will take you to the R for Biologist workshop page. And this file right here is the one you need. This will have the textbook in its full form as well as each chapter. And you will get a download that looks similar to this. And in here, you will have all the chapters, all of the answers to your labs, which is super helpful, as well as commands for each day if you need a refresher or you get lost or you get behind, they're all written there for you. And then each chapter is split off as well with the files that we'll be using. So this, for chapter one, we'll be using all of these files. Okay. The first thing I, you know, everybody learns when they get in is where am I? Uh, you are in this lovely terminal, but you don't actually have a good idea of what folder you are connected to. So there's a, a concept in Unix that we've used that's called uh, PWD, Present Working Directory. So if you've ever used Unix, which is blessedly available right here, when I typed PWD, it would print where I am. This is where all my files are. This is where R is going to be looking for, or in this case, Unix is going to be looking for files. And there's a similar concept in R and it is get working directory. 
and it is going to tell me that I'm also. If you wanted to save this elsewhere, you can set your working directory. And you would give it wherever you'd like it to go. Let's call this so it's the same thing it is. Anytime you see this carrot with no error or extra information, that command went through. Even if it's not telling you anything specific, that means that it was a successful command. It will complain at you usually in nice angry red if it is not getting what you're saying. Okay, so now that we know where things are gonna go, let's load some of our files in. What's nice about our studio is it's very convenient. There's this wonderfully conveniently named upload button and you can click that and choose your files. And here I'm going to load all of these with the chapter one because we will use those today. And unfortunately, I don't believe you can load more than one at a time. So just consider it practice doing it over and over again. reinforce those neural connections. You should have five files total and look like this. And you should be able to see them on your side. If you are having problems uh, unzipping the files, please let Bavia know on Slack. That way she can help you uh, go through. Both Bavia and Carrie are helping online to get this running uh, while I will be helping people in Indianapolis. <laughs> 